Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another brand new episode of the Epic Film Guys podcast. Welcome. If this is your first time here, big props to Podbean. Thank you very much for featuring us to help promote yeah. the live stream for The Cure. So if this is your first time here, uh, I'm Nick. And I'm Justin. We also have our good friend, Loisos, the self-proclaimed god of podcasting, check, joining check, us this evening. Check. We already did Welcome sound checks. Why is he doing that? Yes, it is I, Loisos. <laughs> Thank you for having me on the show once again, gentlemen. We love you. But yeah, huge props to Podbean. It was the best feeling ever, Nick. I can't tell you enough. Like going onto the Podbean app, and then as soon as I open it, the first thing that pops up is our beautiful faces right That's at the right. top of the app. Seriously, oh, though, in all, all seriousness, beautiful faces. major props to them. It's, it's awesome. We appreciate all the support you guys are giving us. Yeah, it's so, so great that they're willing to feature us just for the live stream for The Cure. Uh, if you've never listened to the Epic Film Guys podcast before, if this is your first time, if you clicked on that banner and you want to know what this crazy show is all about, uh, we talk about genitals mostly, sometimes movies, occasionally funny stuff. And, and beer. And booze. And beer. And, and beer. That's right. Beer. We, yes, we genitals. Beer. Yeah. And back to genitals. Did you just go back to genitals? We have a frog. He likes to come on the show. We do have a frog. Speaking of and Justin, a drunk homeless bastard. Speaking of genitals, I gotta yes. say, last week on the show, last week on the show, I put out the challenge to our listeners. I said I needed a sound clip of Donald Trump or the best facsimile that we could get saying that line that everybody that does listen to the show knows so well. And we're gonna break in the new people really, really easily, really quick. All right, so we got this from one of our listeners here. Here we go. I sucked a dick last night. It was huge. <laughs> that's um that's donald trump ladies and gentlemen president donald trump sounds just like him <laughs> wow he's pretty damn good i gotta say i like it. I, I say like it. i say we send it to to fox news sounds like fake news to me i sucked a dick last night no that fake doesn't news. that's not <laughs> fake news we're gonna be talking about <laughs> fake news a little bit here when we start talking about some movie news that hit over the weekend but that's i gotta right. ask you guys nick i'm gonna start with you it looks like you had some fantastic adventures over the weekend how you doing man what did you do this last weekend uh well i'll tell you about that right after i play this promo for the live stream <laughs> Keep quiet. He's trying to drive this show along. He's like, I want to go to bed. Mush. I just want to watch a shitty 80s movie. That's all. I'm Nick. And I'm Justin. We are the Epic Film Guys, and we'd like just a moment of your time to talk about an extremely important event coming up this May. Last year, we hosted the live stream for The Cure, a 12-hour live stream fundraiser where we raised $2,500 for the Cancer Research Institute. 86 cents out of every dollar raised goes to research toward finding a cure. And this year, we're aiming to smash that goal, and we need your help to do it. Join us from May 18th through the 20th for 30 hours of amazing live stream content from us and a whole host of amazing podcasters who will be joining us to try to reach $5,000. For more information, please visit www.livestreamforthecure.com. Together, we can make a difference. And donations are open. You can make an early donation over at livestreamforthecure.com, that website that you just heard in there. We are less than a month away from the live stream for The Cure. And we've got some more shows that are going to be joining us for the event. I didn't pull up the list in time. That should have been far more smooth. How Don't lazy worry. of you. How lazy of you. I know. I cannot believe it either. Uh, we're going to be joined by Da Podcast. That's just what it's called, Da Podcast. Da Podcast. <laughs> Steve from that show is going to be joining us. Uh, we are going to be joined by Talk Spooky. Uh, Talk Spooky to me. Uh, they're actually two ladies out of the UK going to be joining us on, I believe, I Sunday. I love that name. Wow, such a yeah. great name. Uh, Hello Life and the Pod Stuff, Perry and Lindsay, who have been amazing supporters of this event. Thank you very much, both of you, by the way. Uh, I think are finally cemented in their time for Sunday. So they're going to be joining us on Sunday, like in our very last programming block. 
Uh, we are at $225. So if you're watching this, and we actually have this live right now, ladies and gentlemen, on Twitch and on YouTube, we are multicasting. We're literally spreading across the internet like so many fine, fine herpes. Uh, we are at $225. And as of right now, as of recording day, we have 26 days to go until the event begins. Or actually, no, that's until the event ends. Yeah, I think it's. I think that's through the end of the event. So... We are 4.5% of the way toward our gold, gentlemen, and I know a lot of people are really, really excited. We've already sold a bunch of merchandise, yeah. which I'm wearing right now. Justin's amazing you logo are. adorning this nice gray shirt that I got from Redbubble. Uh, Redbubble has been running crazy kinds of sales, even though Redbubble responded to my fucking emails. God damn it. <laughs> I emailed them asking them for I'm going to have to just start bombarding them on Twitter and being like, I'm just going to add them. I'm just gonna add them. It's gonna happen. Verbally harass them. It's it's I the will. one moment Oof. in time where it's actually, a, you know, you should be able to verbally harass them about such a situation. That's right. It's a just positive situation. Yes. Give us or positive the calls. damn coupon code. I just want. I was. I'll hopefully, I'm just gonna keep that outreach. Uh, we got like a three weeks to go. Outreach, 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 outreach. We are just beating those streets, getting the word out there. And so many of you have been amazing. Stickers will be on their way by the time you hear this, unless you're watching it yes. live, of course. Stickers have already made their way, and they're going to reach my house tomorrow, which is going to be amazing. And I will get those out to everybody. So hopefully everybody will have their stickers. Get order on that swag, please, please, please. 100% of all of the profits from all of the... Live stream for the Cure merchandise over on our Redbubble page. That's redbubble.com slash people slash Epic Film, guys. 100% of the profits from every single thing that we sell goes toward live stream for the Cure. I think with everything that we've sold so far, Justin, we've raised somewhere in the neighborhood of like, I don't know, like $45 or so, something like that. Hey, man. That's, and that's, that's not part of the start. total here yet either. So yeah. keep that in mind. Fantastic start. And for those of you interested, you can put the live stream for the cure logo on all kinds of different stuff. It's not just t-shirts. You can put it on a tank top. You can put it on a sweatshirt. We have different available options for you. So you if can you put want it on a, a coffee mug, yeah, coffee mug, whatever travel mugs. Yeah. I put it at, I, I uploaded or not uploaded cause it was already up there, but I, I optioned a whole bunch of additional merchandise just to throw more stuff out there. You could get a live stream for the cure clock. I don't know why you would. A fucking clock, ladies but it's and gentlemen. There. <laughs> a clock, and it's all for a great cause. It'll get hey, if you're a podcaster or you have a nice little collection room or a man cave, put it in there, man. It looks great. But mm -hmm. I really appreciate all your support. And thanks for the kind words about the logo. The logo spent a is a lot of time on that, and it looks great amazing. on that shirt you're wearing. It makes you look stylish. It looks amazing. Yeah, man. So make sure you get those shirts and, and like I said, one hundred percent of the profits. Uh no, I do not believe we have live stream for the cure leggings, Dan. Although we should. We really should. I can I can custom make you a live stream for the cure thong, Dan, if you'd like, but only if you promise to take private photos of yourself and send them only to me. <laughs> oh, but Justin, you had asked me a little bit earlier on uh, what I had been up to, and you asked me that very leading question because you knew I had a big weekend and you wanted to hear me tell you all about it. So I will do that after I talk to the sauce because it's been a while since he's been on the show. Sauce. As he touches himself, touch your head. That's right. Brush that hair. Brush it. He's touching oh. something, all right. <laughs> yeah. Sauce. Loy sauce. A1 Loy steak sauce. How are you, my friend? How have you been? We've missed you on the show. L -l -l Loy sauce. Love playing well, that. Yes. Well, thank you, Nick. I've been doing uh, I've been doing really well. Not too much new to report. Um, just working and programming some awesome films at the Alamo Draft House in Ashburn, Virginia. If you go to the Alamo Draft House in Ashton, Virginia, you get to see the sauce. And what did you guys do? Uh, was it for part six? Friday the 13th, part six? We part did four. part four. Four, recently. four, yeah. I don't know numbers of horror sequels. <laughs> it's all good. So we showed part four, the final chapter, which is the best Friday the 13th movie on Friday the 13th. And it was a fun event. Uh, everyone had a good time, and we filled up a, a, uh, a theater full of horror fans, and it was great. Yeah. And uh, if you're listening from that event, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, we also showed uh, the greatest film ever made, uh, Speed Racer, this past Wednesday <laughs> for its 10th anniversary. So that was a lot of fun. It's hard to believe that movie is 10 years old already. 
Jesus. I know. It's crazy to think so, man. Honestly, and I, I know that when I sat down to watch it, I told him, I'm like, I'm coming for you. It's a movie you like. And they had just installed HDR into the theater and a new bulb into the projector and everything. And I'm like, it's my favorite actual theater there at Alamo. It's got the, the Atmos. I'm coming for you. And I'm like, wow, I can't believe it's been that long since I like specifically skipped this movie in theaters. Because I remember seeing the trailers and I'm like, nah. <laughs> nah, not doing it. And I actually grew up like Cartoon Network, Nick. I'm not sure if you remember or not, but Cartoon Network used to play the Speed Racer cartoon all the time yeah, when we were yeah. kids. So I actually watched it once when I was a kid, but pleasant surprise. It gave me a fucking headache, but it was a fun time. Nonetheless, <laughs> it's just so colorful. And so much shit's going on in it. Um, but yes, it's it, it so was... dense. Every frame has something going on in it. So. Nice. That was a, that was a Star Wars prequel reference. But anyway, cool. um, uh yeah it's it, it's not shakespeare it's not high art it's just a just a fun little flick and uh it's on netflix instant right now i said uh as we were getting ready to record that uh the netflix and swill podcast should do something with it because it's on netflix now that's their that's their <laughs> wheelhouse <laughs> exactly fist yourself but, just turned one year old last week Really? That it. was one year ago that they took it. over the show last week, and that was uh, that was when that sound clip first originated. Oh, wow. Happy birthday, fist yourself. <laughs> you know, actually, fist it's crazy yourself. because a picture showed up on my Facebook, like an anniversary picture of myself and Dan, and I had like that hobo beard, and it was for your bachelor outing, Nick, and I was wearing the crazy for yep. Swayze shirt, and it's me and Dan, and he's got his arm around me like he, like he really wants to spend the night with me that was when i watched half of roadhouse uh which i still have not watched the other half of you strip club god damn it i love that movie but but nick people don't believe it when i when they when i tell them that story they don't believe it that uh, we got halfway through roadhouse and that the power went out and that we the power didn't come back on so we just went to the strip club nobody believes it. they just think i shut it off or broke it or something Honestly, no, God, that, 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 that legit did happen. I mean, I, I was there. I saw it. I saw it all. Um, <laughs> it, reached it, it did up happen. With his dead hand. Dead hand. Mm-hmm. He yeah. signed it in his own blood. We have lots of stories about the bachelor party, Nick, but that's not what we're here to talk about. You had a great weekend. It looks Lies. like you're drinking something pretty awesome in your hand. That's Lies. not beer. I know that you did something cool. I saw all your pictures on Facebook. You and all your pals. The infamous Bill Sutton. What did you do, man? The Where infamous Bill at? Sutton, sponsor of the show, Bill Sutton. Thank mm-hmm. you very much for sponsoring the show, Bill. We love you. Uh, no, went up to the Finger Lakes this weekend, which I have not gotten a chance to do in quite a while. Met some college friends up there, including the, you know, Bill Dozer himself, Mr. Bill Sutton. And yeah, it was really, really fun. I was the DD, so I only tasted it like every four places, but I've been up there so many times. I've tasted everything. Like, I already know what I want. I already know what I'm drinking. Uh, but we did Airbnb. Uh, we stayed in a little place outside of Watkins Glen. and went to a Thai place for dinner. That was really, really nice, even though it got run down in reviews because it wasn't as good as the Thai place in Williamsport, which is apparently the mecca of Thai, Thai food. I, I assume, Nick, I assume that we'll hear something about that on the restaurant podcast. Uh, no, but I, we will hear about what? the Rooster Fish Brewing Company on the restaurant podcast because I am going to record a review of that fucking... Ugh. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that uh, tower of mediocrity. Actually, no, you know what? I had the char grilled wings that they did for an appetizer. Really, really good. And yeah. But yeah, I bought a bunch of different stuff. Uh, I spent $140 on bourbon, and I don't feel one bit bad about it. <laughs> You shouldn't, dude. It's the one thing that you said, like, like last week when we were talking about it. You go up there like what once or twice a year at the most. Oh, you if got, that. you got to spoil yourself. You got to spoil yourself when you go up there. You know I've what you like. So up much there. this week or this this month, I should say, I've worked so much, these, so much overtime, so many call outs. Right, yeah. You know, I've I've finally gotten myself into a position where I've got a financial plan where I'm going to get ahead uh, in like another month or two as long as I stay the course. So I treated myself uh, to two amazing bottles of bourbon, which I will talk about in just a few minutes. But Justin, you always have the most entertaining and most, uh, you know, grandiose weekends of all time. What did you do? Actually, what I did this last weekend involved 
A1 Loichos over here. Um, the only thing that I did this entire weekend is I went to Monster Golf, which is like black light, neon, really cool monster horror <laughs> themed <laughs> mini golf. It's inside. It's fucking awesome. It's like the coolest shit ever. And it's only three miles from my house. So not only do I have the six story laser projected 4K IMAX three miles down the street. Not only do I have Alamo Draft House eight miles down the street, I also have Aslan two miles down the street, and I have Monster Mini Golf. So I guarantee you, Fuck off, I'm Justin. never leaving. I'm never leaving this area. It's never happening. But we did do that. That was really cool. Um, but I didn't do anything all that special. But I did want to talk about real quick a little mm. bit of movie related stuff that happened. The end of last week over the weekend. Wait, uh, is this a movie show? We are the epic film guys. God damn it. So Can't I we got just be the epic something. guys. <laughs> <laughs> epic nothing guys. Can we just become a variety show where like some episodes we do like songs and dances and shit? I'm totally cool with that. If you can hear me tap dancing through the microphone, let's do it. Oh my god, um, we're totally doing it. But I could not be more excited on 420. April 20th, this last Friday, Blumhouse released the first official teaser poster for their brand new Halloween film. Strangely titled, just yet again, Halloween. We got our first look at the new mask, which kind of caused a little bit of a fan uproar a little bit. Um, a lot of people were really dissecting it. Now, Lois Sauce, why don't you tell our listeners what the mask mm-hmm. looks like? Uh, the mask mm-hmm. looks like an old man face. You have the iconic Michael Myers mask with the sunken in eyes and everything, but it has like wrinkles and liver spots and it looks like a shriveled up old man face. Um, And this led me to wonder, is this just for the poster? Are they taking artistic license and just making it look like an old man face to impart upon uh, the the viewer or the spectator um, that, this is 40 years later. It's now an older Michael Myers, or is that how the actual mask is going to look? But it was confirmed by uh, the producer on his Instagram account. Ryan Turk. Yes. He, he confirmed that it's, this is the mask. It's the mask, <laughs> which this I'm okay with, mask, which I love actually as yeah. a big fan. We've seen a lot of shitty masks in the franchise <coughs> resurrection <coughs> part five, among others, even part four. I mean, whatever. But I liked the poster. It's simple. It's effective. Um, obviously, uh, fully aware of why they're going with just the title Halloween again. I don't like it. No, with brand recognition, it, it's going to get those mainstream, you know, general moviegoers in theater. Siege, oh, it's another Halloween. It's just called Halloween. So that's going to work for them. Also announced is official confirmation that John Carpenter will be doing the score for the film. So no more rumors about it. No more him being wishy-washy about it. It's happening. But as a Halloween fan, the thing that kind of drove me the most crazy, Brian and Nick is over the weekend, a little minuscule horror movie news site called horror freak news posted. Well, what he could, most people could consider a bogus news article which has since been taken down due to the request of Blumhouse that stated that there was a recent screening of the new Halloween film, a rough cut with a temp score and that it was a horrible screening. Everyone hated it. There were a ton of negative remarks that it's a big fail. It's a huge miss that, you know, it's, it's worse than Rob Zombie's Halloween. And it caused a huge, like (laughs) that's not possible. Well, it's entirely possible. Uh, It's entirely possible. I doubt it. Even though, news to our listeners, I did sit down with you and watch Rob Zombie's Halloween remake Friday night until two in the morning, um, just because you had never seen it. But I hadn't seen it all the way through, no. But the reality of this is... That's a is discussion this, for another time. <laughs> this news hit, and then another news outlet, du-hd.com, posted another article saying that there was a screening and that there were great remarks about it. Then John Carpenter comes out and says... There hasn't been a screening. There's no cut even uh, prepared yet. Nothing happened. Yet Jason Blum, who owns Blum House, which is one of the biggest horror outlets ever for movies hitting theaters these days, you know, commented publicly a few weeks ago. Yes, I just watched a cut of the movie. I'm really excited about it. I don't, I'm paraphrasing here. So what, what's bothering me here is 
yeah, how fans are so rabid these days. We've talked about it so much, mostly about comic book movies, but it's venturing into the horror community and every other genre. And it, it's driving me crazy that fans can't just sit back and wait for a trailer. Like, did you see these comments, Brian? Uh, I, I I saw on Facebook uh, on John Carpenter's official page how um, so they were there was one fan who's like posting in the comments but like but look like I saw a photo of someone who had like the ticket like the screening ticket and he was commenting that under John Carpenter's statement that there's been no screenings or anything and just like but how can people have a ticket if there hasn't if, if there wasn't a screening and it's like do you ha- do you know how easy it is to just like bullshit Photoshop, like make something yeah make some Photoshop. make something and print it out like you're Photoshop. arguing with hang the- tight for you're- just a moment i'm actually going to send you a winning lottery ticket for 500 million dollars oh my and god it's really be 100% are you serious oh my god. legit real and i oh want the God. first thing you do with that to be to book the epic film guys to play earth literally just planet earth like we're just gonna be everywhere like, literally it's happening. every auditorium of, of all time forever oh my god God, people are fucking dumb god god bless you nick uh thank you <laughs> I, I i'm anxiously awaiting that check in the mail thank you so much but anyhow um uh yeah i just like he's arguing with john carpenter himself the master of horror this is the verified account with the blue check mark and everything john carpenter himself you're gonna argue with him how the movie business works <laughs> like come on these the fans are insane is, though and, and nick knows this we all know this we do a movie podcast i guess you could call it that lies um they screen every movie and they screen it as far out as they can whenever they put together a cut that they feel worthy to be looked at. And they look at it to see what can be bumped up here, what can be changed there, what needs to be improved, what do they need to do in the end to make a good movie. Um, it's a normal practice. And I personally believe that they did do a screening. Now, was this a highly publicized screening? No, but Blumhouse has actually asked all these new news outlets to remove any information about this screening or about reactions from their websites, which they have done Both articles have been officially removed. But my point is, dude, as a fan first, wait till you see a trailer. I know fans like in this day and age, they're they're so uppity and they're so anxious. They can't wait to actually see anything for themselves. They want to just take rumor as fact and they want to just shit all over it and be angry about it. It's like, dude, please, like my reservations are there about a movie 40 years in the making another sequel another slash reboot but i'm really excited i think people should really wait till they see something for themselves before they start judging and that's just with anything in general not just movies but i mean come on dude yeah and then like um there was there was i don't want to call anyone out but um when you posted the poster there was someone in the comments saying like this will be a flop and i'm like well first of all it's definitely not going to be a flop and second of all like what what makes you think that this is this movie is going to be a flop based on the teaser poster i mean come on um i don't know i think people are so quick to write things off nowadays i mean take a look at uh, i know it's a divisive film and I, I i have a feeling that this halloween reboot or sequel is going to be very similar to star wars the last jedi where it's like fans are just going to completely reject it no matter what no matter what's in the movie no matter how good it is no matter how well made it is people are just going to have a problem with it from the get go and um i hope that's not the case i i would love for this movie to just be a movie that pleases both fans and general movie going audiences but i don't know i just feel like fans are so jaded nowadays like people go into movies expecting the world and a half and literally i saw this comment on the poster and one of my other friends posts that posted it to their Facebook, the first comment was, I hope it fails. And that's really a negative way to look at things. I mean, let's just hope everything's great, but leaving that aside for now. Uh, I think there's more that we do on this show, Nick. Isn't that scared there the shit out of me? What the fuck? More things? <laughs> Isn't there like other things we do on wow. the show? All right. Well, well, there's this little thing no. that I really enjoy nope. that we like to do on the Epic Film Guys podcast where we guzzle liquid down our gullet. It's called, hmm, it's called, what are you drinking? I really, I really need a better system for getting the frog graphic to pop up instantly when you speak. You're too slow. We love cock. Who keeps saying that? That sounds like Mr. Skins. 
Hmm. I don't know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what are you drinking? I'm back. Puke and rally. Yeah. Woo! Oh, Give me a beer. All right, we have to get over to him, Justin, because you never know. You never know quite what he's going to pull out. Sometimes he'll pull out some Dos Equis, or sometimes he'll pull out some sparkling mineral water. I got to know. A1 Loy steak sauce. It wouldn't be great if he was drinking A1 steak sauce. What are you drinking? I think you made that joke already last time I was on. Aww. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. I'm not drinking shit. Sorry. How to... dare you? You left, I know. I agree. Here. you left your rye whiskey here. You left everything here. It's all at Justin's house. That's where I drink now. Um. I just haven't gone to the store to get more beer because I'm a responsible adult, so. Lazy's more like it. Lazy kid. Shh. Shh. <laughs> no, that's not the case at all. But anyway, um, yeah, I have nothing interesting to say here, so I'm interested. I'm more interested in what you all are drinking. I Let's get it to you, Nick, because it looks like what you have is was way you. more interesting. I, way more I'm amazing. sorry, he's the president. I mean, he, he when he wants to chime in, we got to let him, I think. He interrupted Hillary plenty during the uh, true the debates. Very true. So why not why not interrupt us? Yeah, right? Well, if he if he didn't interrupt us, I'd be surprised. I'd be sh- outright shocked if he did interrupt us. It's true. Anyway, like he, he actually had respect for human life. But <laughs> Nick, what is it you got? What do you have in your hand? What do you got guzzling down your gullet this evening? <laughs> nice all right well yes in lieu of beer which justin believe it or not the only thing i came back from the finger lakes with in terms of beer was a six pack of citra hopped pale ale from southern tier brewing that i bought at the grocery store actually it was a gas station that i never even drank any of (laughs) that's the only beer that i actually came back from the finger lakes with Uh, i did not I, i did not buy any beer i did go to a couple breweries uh, that I'd never been to before, uh, especially the Flirtless Brewery, way, way, way up, uh, like up past Hector and Romulus and everything like that. Uh, the brewers are really nice. Their beers are decent. Their beers are decent. Uh, really nice people. Really great to talk to. So that was really, really interesting. And then we went to a cheese farm, and I came in my pants about 17 times. But that's neither here nor there. We are here. Ladies and gentlemen, you knew I was going to drink this the first night on the show after I got back from the Finger Lakes, baby. And I'm going to pop it right up there for the live stream to see. I am drinking. This is from Finger Lakes Distilling. This is their three and a half year single barrel bourbon whiskey. And Justin, what they did with this guy, what they did with this is they got some Imperial Stout Barrels from the Lucky Hair Brewing Company, which is right on the Finger Lakes, also on Seneca. They got some Imperial Stout Barrels, and they aged this for three and a half years in Imperial Stout Barrels. So not only do you get that wonderfully smoky flavor from the barrel, you get that nice caramel note in there, but you also get some of that sweet malt from the Imperial Stout and just a little bit of that kind of darker flavor, like a little bit of a coffee note, a little bit of a chocolate note from that Imperial Stout. This. I about shit my pants at the distillery when I had this, so much so that I spent $140 on two bottles of it. <laughs> Dude, totally wow. worth it for good stuff. I it I mean, is I, like I will yeah. I will barely like take sips out of it, you know, but it is absolutely incredible. So, yeah, Justin, I got to know my friend cuz I see you drinking beer out of your little goblet there. I, I got to know. You have. What I I I, I, no. I want what you have. You're doing this you on purpose. It. You're teasing me. When we do the normal show, when we're not live streaming, I I can't visualize it the way that I can That's when true. I can. Actually you can really see. see. It. Look at the color on that. Oh, it's a little bit darker than your normal so, bourbon. So good. It's dude. It is beyond words. Incredible, Jared Taylor. Yes, my friend. It is unbelievable, Justin. I've got to know, my friend. What hast thou got swizzling down thy 
Well, sweaty yeah, penis uh, hole. Uh, well, it's uh, it's all right, you know, <laughs> nothing special. Um, it's still a New England IPA. Okay, so I went to Wegman's and I didn't do my normal Aslan run this last weekend. However, our good friend Toby, who is a big fan of the show, and I are going to be trading a beer this week. Uh, but until then, I picked up a Blue Point Brewing Company's Hazy Bastard. This is the new trend now where every single brewery is attempting to do their own New England and they can't do them right. juicy IPA. And this is double dry hopped as well. So typically that would mean to me like a huge aroma. As soon as you open this thing, you pour it in your glass and it's going to be great. I'm not going to lie. This thing really isn't horrible. It tastes a lot like what. Uh, you would consider Nick a heady topper clone. It's got a little bit more bitterness. It's, there's a little bit more malt than there should be for this type of an IPA, but it's fine. It's 8% alcohol by volume. Obviously no idea about the IBUs, probably none, but um, I would say it's decent. I would say it's passable. I'm going to drink them. I'm not going to toss them, but I went to Wegmans. They had them for $10.99 for a four pack, 8%. I'm like, hey, this will get me through the show this week. And I didn't get to make my way to Aslan, even though I have a few of those Gozas left in the fridge, which those are saved for a rainy day, my friend. Yeah. But it's, it's fine. It's decent. Caleb, I would probably tell you to chug it and get hammered off of it when we do our killer clowns from outer space B side in the next few weeks. Psst, that's actually going to happen. Voice sauce. <laughs> schedule that. It's happening. But yeah, man, that's <laughs> it for beer and booze and voice sauce being an, a non participator by drinking water. Lame, bro. I'm sorry. If I were, if I didn't leave all of my beers at your house, I would have, uh, you know, I would partake. But alas, I picture myself putting a funnel to your mouth, tying you up and pouring down the rest of that rye whiskey down your throat until you can't walk. So that'll be your punishment, damn it. But that's it for our first segment, ladies and gentlemen. Nick, any closing words before we take a break and we move into our main meat of the show? Mmm, meat. What's up, peeps? This is Gerald, the host of Two Peas on a Podcast. I'm going to tell you where to find us at the end of this quick clip. Here's me and my partner, Andy, as we discuss aliens and ghosts. There's a freaking loot. Like you do? Dude. Do you believe you in ghosts? You know how big? Do you believe in ghosts? I believe that we interpret. Uh, I know you believe in spirits. You're spiritual. Well, you don't want to get into this. Okay. It'll be a it. very long. That'll be next week's show. Now, I don't believe in E.T. landing, and no, I don't believe in uh, mummies being raised from the dead. I believe... There is a spiritual dimension that we personify as ghosts, but I don't believe in ghosts per se. Now, aliens. So there's like hauntings and the, stuff. You, no, no, no. So, it's different. So there's, when you're a ghost, what do you, you just like? Can you're you not a ghost. This is not. I, oh. don't believe, I don't believe in ghosts that way. No. You're a spirit. Yes. No, no. no. Can you see people on Earth if you're? A spirit? I mean, I don't know. This is deep for me. Do you really want to hear getting, it? No, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I, I mean, I do want to hear it, but I guess we can do it off. I don't think so. You do. So, uh, but do uh, you believe aliens? In aliens. aliens. Let's let's stick to aliens. Right. Um, Crop circles, all that stuff. The, no, because you I don't mean, believe in that either. The universe. You think that's a John Deere aliens that? hasn't. Aliens haven't come to Earth yet. John Deere didn't do that. Cross here's circle. the thing, bro. Okay. Here's right. the thing. The universe is a pretty big place well, with a there. lot of different <laughs> I thought you passed out of life <laughs> this is the so universe deep. is a pretty <laughs> big place this is so deep for you pass out halfway through it right, the universe me. is so large that A there has alright guys make sure you find Gerald and Andy two peas on a podcast go to iTunes or Apple podcast and search two peas on a podcast or follow us on Twitter two peas on a pod you can also go to our website and find all of our contact information it's two peas on a pod Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Epic Film Guys podcast. And the we... That is right, I am the <laughs> Loisos, and we are here to talk about Phase 3 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, um, Nick, because you're the Marvel fan of the three of us... Is that what I am? You... You just love Marvel so much. You love all of the films, and everyone knows this. Like everyone, all of them. yeah, everyone, yeah, all. everyone knows you to be the, uh, the the person who always is going to defend Marvel, who's always going to champion Marvel. So I'm going to pass along to you your overall thoughts uh, of Phase Three as a whole, and then we'll break down the films individually as we discuss. So Nick, wow, please take us away. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Um, well, 
Phase three, I mean, phase two, as we discussed on our mini sode last week, is a fucking disaster. Winter Soldier aside, and for those of you who like Guardians of the Galaxy, fine. Uh, you know, but aside from those two, phase two is just a disaster. You've got Iron Man 3, incredibly polarizing. Thor of the Dark World, so fucking weak. Out of the gate, phase three comes out swinging with Civil War, which gives us probably one of the best action sequences in the entire MCU, period. Uh, it gives us the introduction to Black Panther, a character we would see later on in his own film. And it just, it, it sets the stage for bigger stakes. I think, I, I think what civil war really, really does, especially in terms of the whole MCU is it really, really sets the stakes for a much bigger, badder battle to come. And of course we're going to get that with infinity war, which is going to be out. Uh, well, actually the time, the day that you guys hear this the, will be, the, uh, yeah, the day this is released. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm um yeah, phase three much, 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 much stronger overall than than phase two. And I'm actually gonna drop a little a little bomb on Justin right now. Wait, do I have a little do I have a little what do I got? Here we go. There it is. Uh so yeah, I actually sat down tonight, right before recording, and I watched Spider Man Homecoming before <gasps> Uh, Are you serious? No way. To jump in here. I didn't even, I didn't post it anywhere. I didn't say I was going to watch it. Oh my God. Uh, anything. Or, uh, so yeah. So uh, I still didn't get a chance to watch Doctor Strange. Unfortunately, I was way, way, way too busy uh, to fit both of them in uh, over now, the course I, of the week. I, I had given you the option though, Nick. I, yeah. Last week I harassed you during our phase two uh, discussion and I said you had to watch them. Then I texted you the next morning and I felt bad about that. And I said, <laughs> I'm not going to put up a poll. Like I do a Black Panther. I, I understand you you're busy. I know what you got going polls. on. I'm like, polls are bullshit. Bullshit. They're not bullshit. People vote. <laughs> it's real human beings. It's no bots. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I'm actually really surprised and I'm, I'm very, very satisfied with the fact that you watched the film. Now, we haven't gotten to that one yet, but I don't know what you felt we'll about it. We'll talk about um, it when we get there. But yeah, I didn't get to see Doctor Strange, but there's only, you know, uh, there's there's one really bad film and in, in I'll say that so I didn't hate Homecoming so we'll talk about that when we get there but there's only one film in Phase Three that I think is really not as good as the other ones so yeah we'll Ooh, get there okay. but I, I want to kick it well, back over to Loy Sauce yeah. first but wait we're gonna keep yeah, Justin definitely. cooling on his heels here uh, let's kick it back over to the <sighs> sauce of the God of Podcasting himself um your thoughts kind of just overall on Phase Three. Um, well, I think phase three is easily the best as, as a whole so far, because we're still not done with phase three yet. True. Um, but I think overall it's the strongest in terms of, uh, world building and storytelling. Um, because even in phase one, you had, uh, the first Thor and you had Iron Man two and, and, and kind of duds like those. Um, but the, in my opinion, and I'm I'm not the biggest fan of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. I enjoyed it, but there isn't there isn't a dud so far. I I don't think. Um, I think what it, what it also manages to do is give us the most variety that we've had in these films so far. Part of what made uh, Phase Two seem so um, so much like a slog is the fact that the film started to blend together um, yeah, in a lot of different Iron ways. Man. But, you know, it was, yeah. Um, and it started to become a formula, feel like, feel, feel very tired. Um, whereas in this one, we have a Civil War, which is, uh, it's essentially, for all intents and purposes, an Avengers movie. You know, you have all of these characters coming together, clashing, and it's it's a war movie, essentially. Um, and uh, then we have Doctor Strange, which is dealing with some of the more mysticism and, and uh, magical aspects of the MCU, which we have not seen as of as of yet. And then Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, which again, uh, just like the first Guardians, is such a strange, bizarre um, uh, film that kind of feels separate and apart from the Marvel Universe, even though it kind of branches in here and there drops a couple references and um, the end of guardians two kind of leads into where the heroes uh, are going to end up in infinity war. It still feels like it, you know, it's, it's galaxies away. Uh, and then uh, Spider-Man homecoming is a very small story. It's very contained. Um, and 
it, it it's a nice change of pace from the epicness of of the Marvel universe. Um, every movie feels like it needs to be about the end of the world and all these cataclysmic events. And Spider-Man: Homecoming is very s- small and contained. Thor: Ragnarok is an out-and-out comedy. We've talked about Black Panther um, and how epic and amazing it is. So you 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 get all of these different types of Marvel film. They're still Marvel films, so you still have the formula, you still have the villains and all of that kind of villain of the week thing going on. But I think this has the best variety. Uh, and and each movie kind of has its own distinct tone, and I really like that. Um, and I think uh, again, if they keep going at this pace, I mean, I don't see Marvel slowing down anytime soon. I mean, we'll see after Infinity War, having Ant Man and the Wasp c- come out so soon after, I think could hurt the Marvel universe. But we'll see. We'll see. All right, and we got to get over to him. I know he's chomping at the bit to get his voice in here on phase three. Justin, go ahead. Let us have it. Well, I got to be honest with you. Um, Right off the bat, I think phase three for me is the most successful in the sense that it gets one of the main things right that most of the time we find as a fault in Marvel films, and that's the villains. Yes. I feel like phase three knocks it out of the park, coming right out of the gate with its villains starting out with Civil War, uh, with, with, with Zemo, who is a villain that was the first Marvel villain in a long time that even Nick liked. I enjoyed the villain. I thought it was very well done. And of course, there's no mistaking anything here. Civil War is is one of the best Marvel films overall. It's entertaining. It has, as Nick said, one of the best action fight sequences out of any comic book movie, let alone just Marvel movie of all time. And it introduces to Black Panther. We had to see these characters brawling together. Um, and we have the Russos to thank for that. Then skip along to Doctor Strange and piggybacking <laughs> up what you said there, Loisos. I thought it was a fun way to go into a fantasy type film. There are some visuals in that film that, You haven't seen anything like that in any modern film, let alone just a comic book movie that I'm swear to God, dude, if I was still young and I was still doing, you know, crazy shit, I would have taken LSD to watch that movie. I swear to God, because the visuals in that movie, they, they take you to a place that, yeah, it's, it's a great place. And, uh, we've talked about Guardians of the Galaxy volume two on the show. I was more kind to what the Nick was. I mean, just seeing, you know, Kurt Russell in, in a big movie like this again and him being so good and, and, and chewing scenery and, uh, it was fun. It was enjoyable. I didn't find it anywhere near as good as the first film, but it was still passable. Then we move on to Spider-Man Homecoming, which in my opinion is the best Spider-Man film since Spider-Man 2 by Sam Raimi. And I thought it was, as you said, perfectly put, Loisos, contained. Um, I'm still not that guy that's jumping on the train saying that Tom Holland's my favorite Spidey or even my favorite Peter Parker. I have my reservations, but I love, love, love Michael Keaton in that movie. And I think he's great as the vulture. And, uh, you know, moving on to Thor Ragnarok, it's fun. Uh, Taika Waititi, who did uh, What We Do in the Shadows, perfect person to get in the director's chair for this movie the humor is spot on even if it is overdone even though a lot of it kind of hits the floor rather than hitting for the most part it hits perfectly and jeff cole i mean come on and we have one of the best villains in a long time in that movie um so hella leading up exactly hell is fantastic leading up to infinity war i think that they're on a more positive note than they are a negative. There's nothing that I outright hated in phase three so far. I've been completely entertained by all of the output since May 6, 2016. And I have to go back to a little memory. Loy sauce. This is a great memory. It's very special to me. It was prior to opening night. It was actually May 5th when you and I went to go see an advanced screening of Shane Black's The Nice Guys at Alamo draft house, DC area before you worked there. And you were like, hey, man, we could go watch Civil War tonight after this. <laughs> it was like, a, I think it was like a nine o'clock show and we saw the nice guys or like eight o'clock. Must so we were, already, eight, yeah. we were already getting out late and you're like, we should just go to Bowtie where I work and we could just go watch it now. Yeah. So we went to go watch Civil War at like 1.30, 2 in the morning. And uh, before anyone else had seen it that I knew and it was a really awesome feeling. And uh, it's still one of my favorite Marvel films, but 
I got to tell you, without Civil War, I wouldn't be nearly as excited as I am for Infinity War. And I'm telling you right now, guys, I probably haven't been this excited for a Marvel movie since the first Avengers. Wow. Not even Black Panther? Mm. Black Panther was different. Only because, only because Black Panther out of all these films, I'll be honest here. It's my favorite out of all of them for numerous reasons. Outside of the fact that Michael B. Jordan is a beast and he gave me the fist bump and I got his autograph and I met him <laughs> yeah, and I was yeah, on set yeah, with yeah. him and blah, blah, blah. But for real, he, he is, in my opinion, the best Marvel cinematic villain that we've seen yet. And I think that it's the best solo Marvel film since the first Iron Man. That's as far as origin stories are concerned. The, Correct. Yes. The Winter Soldier is in its own league, but... I loved that movie. So again, Marvel is perfectly built up to this point, And that's why I think I'm as excited as I am for Infinity War. We got the Russos back. What else could we want from this movie? Nick, I got to ask you, what else could you want from Infinity War? I just don't want them to fuck Thanos up, man. Just, you know, this has been a movie 10 years in the making. This has been like literally since the end, the end credit scene of Avengers, the first film. You know, it's been something that's been built up and up and up and up and up. And he's really got to be all powerful. People have got to die. Probably some children to make Loy Sauce happy. And <laughs> dismember to make him happy. Dismembered, man. <laughs> it, it, it's It's got to happen. It really, really, really does. Like, shit's got to get fucked up. And, well, you know, that's people one of my die and, and he's got to just he's got to cause just he's got to cause irreversible damage. If it's one of those things like it, it like, you know, in comic books, they do it all the time. And I like Dragon Ball Z. Oh, we're going to wish them all back to life and wish none of it ever happened. Or if there's some kind of deus ex machina like that that comes in and just erases all of it, it neuters the whole thing. There's got to be permanent damage that he's going to be able to do here. And it's got to be powerful. It's got to be impactful. So I think people are going to die. I think at least one, like, super, super audience favorite character and, like, Major fan player. favorite character yeah. is going to die. And we'll see where they go from there. Yeah, that's one of that's one of my complaints that I had with Civil War is that the stakes felt uh, yeah. non-existent. Is it awesome? I feel like is a that almost. Is, that's kind of the one thing you can say about it is, is ultimately it feels like they're having a you know, overblown pillow fight, you know? Yeah. Or like, yeah, they're they're wearing padded suits, and and it it doesn't feel real to me. Whereas with Infinity War, there there needs to be some kind of, uh, and I'm sure there will be. Uh, on the Marvel Instagram, I was just checking right now; they have a whole like no spoilers thing that they shot with the whole cast. That basically the the cast telling people don't spoil the movie. So I'm sure there must be some revelation or some character death that's going to shake people up you know can i be honest here can i be honest (laughs) i hope i hope i'm saying i'm being honest on our show i have the ability and the right to say this i hope stark dies wow yeah he might i mean for all we know Not because not because i hate him but only because we and i love and as i talked about in our phase one discussion and our phase two discussion i love downey jr as iron man but he has been the basis of most of these movies and a lot of them have revolved around him based on the popularity of him as the character. And I want to see what the Marvel films can be without that. Um, one of my pet peeves and one of my major issues with Spider-Man Homecoming, which could have got greater marks than it did from me, is the fact that, yes, Iron Man's on the poster. Yes, Iron Man has to be in that movie. And I get it. I get in the comics, ladies and gentlemen. I get those of you comic lovers out there like, well, he's in this comic with Spider-Man. Yes, he gives him this spider suit and this and that. I don't give a fuck about that because I'm not reading the comic. I'm going in and watching the movie. So for me, I don't need to see Iron Man in a Spider-Man movie. I want to see Spider-Man being Spider-Man. So that to me is like, I'm ready to see that character move on. Um, And no, I don't care about him being recast. I don't need to see another Iron Man at all for a long time. I just want to see these characters flourish and do their own thing. I'm I'm excited to see more Black Panther, Um, maybe Captain Marvel. We'll see how she's handled. But um, that's just one thing for me. I think that's one of the biggest stakes that they can have happen is Iron Man getting offed. I agree with that to a certain extent. And um, 
we need we need to see Thanos as as a villain um he needs to have a physicality to him um if if they if, if he's just generic cgi bad guy like you know steppenwolf and justice league uh i mean god help us if that's the case because this is the big bad this is who they've been building up to um <sighs> and i would love to see thanos <laughs> don't don't even don't even i i can hear the hesitation in Nick's voice he does not want to he doesn't want to play that next rants theme right now. He doesn't want to even think about uh, back November, and he, yeah. he doesn't want to think about Justice League. I, I, I know. I, I can hear the music in my head. Dun, 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 dun. No, we don't want to go there. Not yeah. I, I honestly, Lois, I think I, I think we all have a little bit more faith in the Russos, at least at, from what we've seen in the past two outings of Marvel. I don't think they're going to give us anything remotely close to. Especially Any, because they said yeah. uh, in interviews that that this will be essentially a Thanos movie. Like he's the star of the film, so I'm sure we'll get. Be, God I'm sure it. we'll get a lot of backstory with him because all the attempts they've had at building him up in the past have fallen completely flat. I hate. I believe it's in Age of Ultron, the uh, post credit scene of Age of Ultron, when it just literally shows him walking up, picking up the gauntlet, and he says uh, something like, Final "I'll do, do it myself." myself. Yeah. That's so stupid. I hate that line and I hate that scene. It's there's not there's nothing to preface it. It's just a thing that happens. And I guess it's supposed to get people excited, but I don't know. Well, For me really it falls completely silly, flat. Um like I, I in particular hate the character in Guardians of the Galaxy because I think the CGI looks really bad on him. Like he's just he looks way different. Like if you even compare that CGI to what he looks like in Infinity War, he looks way worse. Like infinitely mm. worse. Well, of course yeah. he's going to. I mean, technology changes every day, so I feel like that's something that's going to be inevitable. I just I think, think that they didn't the best have like and... final design elements of the character decided upon. Like they didn't have that kind of Marvel's had all these far-reaching goals in place for for years and years and years and years, but I don't think like when you even look at that post-credit scene of him in Avengers, you know, it, it's definitely that the, the visual idealization of this character has evolved ever since the first iteration, kind of like uh, like uh, Smeagol in Lord of the Rings when when he was in Fellowship, you know, yeah. the character that appears in the Two Towers and Return of the King doesn't look like the character that you see in like those silhouettes and like those far shots in Fellowship because Jackson hadn't really visualized exactly how he wanted to envision the character yet. And that's I think that's really evident here as well. Exactly. Um, I want to talk about uh, a little bit um, Nick. I mean, Spider-Man Homecoming. We need to hear your thoughts. Oh, yeah. We have to finally hear this. It's been a long time in the waiting. Last summer, man. Not even. It was what? When was that? Will we get released? It was last summer. July. So, yeah. yeah. July 7th. Yeah. So uh, at least initial thoughts, overall thoughts, whatever you want to give on that. Um. Yeah, initially, uh, let's see. So, what else came out? I'm, I'm kind of I mean, looking because, at the because, list look, of what else came you've, out. Because you've in, seen uh, every single Spider-Man movie. You have seen every single yeah, Spider-Man true. movie in the theater, except Very for true. Homecoming. Very true. Uh, but yeah, I will say probably the best film of Phase Three. Oh my god! By, what? <laughs> by a lot. Holy shit! What? By Are a you lot. serious? Oh my god! Holy by a lot. Yeah. Shit. And it's. It's it it does have its faults, especially the, the final <laughs> oh battle God. sequence on that fucking plane it. is ridiculous. I, I'm sorry, but that it, it looks it's it's even almost more CGI gasm than the final CGI fight fest and either Justice League or Black Panther. But like even still, like man, they fucking like if they did nothing else right in that film, they fucking nailed the the high school aesthetic in that film those kids oh, feel yeah, like yeah, high yeah. schoolers those kids basically are high schoolers it's 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 completely engrossing in that regard and i mean i i won't deny it keaton was legit the fucking bomb.com legit he was he was straight up fucking amazing straight up easily easily one of the best marvel villains for sure probably probably this. Like it, it. That's the thing. It is is his motivations are so real. His motivations are so easy to understand. He's he really, really is fantastic. And the fact that you're you you mentioned it earlier, where it's not all about conquering the world. It's not all about doing this. It's not all about doing that. But you know what? 
you can easily see it from his point of view. And, and that's what I always love about a good villain. And I know somebody mentioned that back when the film was reviewed on the show, but you know, he's the hero of his own story and you can't, you can sit in his shoes. You can sit in his shoes and you can see it from his point of view. They took away everything from him and he had like, what else was he supposed to do? You know? So he, he, he did, you know, the only thing that he thought he could to take care of his family, which, you know, I mean, that that's, that's, it's good. That's compelling stuff. That's a uh, very reminiscent of uh, say Sandman in Spider-Man three to bring up that film, I guess, but <laughs> Well, not but, only can you under- yeah. not only can you understand his motivations, he's also scary. There's the scene in the car with him and Peter where, like, he's, ge- he's genuinely as fuck. yeah, genuinely menacing scary, as fuck. <laughs> like, yeah. overpowering, and he overpowers that entire film, and that's why I think they wanted to get him for the film, and that's why Nick, as we talked about many times in the podcast, pre homecoming then you know post homecoming that you know there was a negotiations he declined to be in it and then they went back and talked to him again six months later and probably up the price um because they know what kind of gravitas michael keaton has and what kind of weight he brings along with him i mean he is the best batman ever and you're getting him to play yeah. a villain called the vulture right after he was in a movie called birdman which he was supposed to win an oscar for um which he was nominated for uh, all that aside but for me like seeing him in that movie made that movie but my question to you though even though we're getting off on a tangent here how do you feel though after watching homecoming about tom holland as peter parker slash spider-man like are you are you more accustomed to seeing maybe he's your favorite spider-man or peter parker or do you have like a, a soft spot for garfield nah, or mcguire I won't, even, I won't even weigh in on that one he's he's good the kid's legit good in the movie he's i mean he's he's definitely the mcu spidey i'll, I'll definitely give him that he definitely stands up uh toe to toe and and holds his own even amongst the heavyweights quote unquote of, of the mcu that we've seen in a lot of films throughout the years Fair here. enough he stands up toe to toe with stark like he definitely you know he, he's when stark's on the screen and and, and Downey has this way with Stark as a character, especially of mugging the screen when he's on. And that's why I, we, I, the, the poster, he's this big prominent thing in the poster and the one trailer, it's all you see in the trailer. So it led to a lot of people really afraid that he was going to mug this film. And I think that the kid's so charismatic that even though there's still that kind of effort there on the, on, on, on the part of Stark in the film, I still think the kid outshines him. And I think that's credit to Holland because of how charismatic he is. He's just like, he, he, he imbues that character with a lot of energy, which is great, which is great. Like I said, I, I would only give it the edge over black Panther, which I also absolutely loved because I disliked the final CGI battle less. <laughs> that's the only reason I would give that's, it the edge over black fair. Panther. Yeah, the, totally the, scene, the scene on the plan is 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 very CGI heavy. Um, yeah, and, and, and I also don't think that it has the impact that it should until the plane crashes. Spoiler you know alert! What I liked and about they're... that film, though, you know, but my favorite thing about that film was is that he doesn't like like Vulture is that powerful of a villain, and I and I kind of like that about him as well. Vulture is that powerful of a villain. That Spider-Man never really beats him. Like his his ambition kind of beats him in the end. Like he beats himself. Like he's still so determined to steal what is that? I think it's the case of arc reactors or whatever he's trying to fly away with, and his 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 suit fucking blows up. Like, and I love right. that about that character. Like, you literally create a foe that's just so indestructible that like, no matter if he's got the the Stark enhanced suit, which that's probably if I had one nitpick about the film, like the back and forth with him and the suit, like Karen got old after a while. I was like, it's stop it. yeah. talking to your fucking suit, god. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it the first few times. I thought it was funny yeah. and entertaining, but then after a while, it did. De- it definitely. Got I hope old. that when what like not, obviously he's going to get that you know super souped up suit that we've seen in the in the Infinity War trailer. So I'm hoping that fucking suit doesn't just talk to him all the time. And it's I hope just that get he to works, see Spider Man Spider Man in because I, I feel like when you do that kind of thing to him, like it's just you're not letting Spider Man Spider Man. You're just you know making Spider Man you know Iron Man with webs. And I, I exactly. felt like it was a, like that graded on me a little bit, but yeah, what a fucking movie. Great fucking movie. Great. I'm fucking so movie. happy. Honestly, I, and, and I told you, and I snuck Dan it in today. I, I actually was late to recording today because I was finishing it up. God damn it. 
I'm I'm super happy about this because you didn't get to come on for that review, so we brought Dan on from Netflix and Swells to review that, and he really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I was very pleasantly surprised by it, and then, I mean, I did watch it again on Ultra 4K. Speaking of Marvel, uh, we just did, it just dropped a couple days ago over on Sora Married to Movie Geek, the MCU fantasy movie draft. Dan, myself... Uh, John from Now in Technicolor and, of course, Justin Winters shocked up himself, uh, all drafted the films of the MCU, and Spider-Man Homecoming was actually Dan's number one. So should we do, like, favorite and least favorite movies of Phase 3? Is that a thing? Can we do that? We can. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean obviously, uh, Homecoming is definitely my favorite at this point. So, Justin, what's your favorite movie of Phase 3 so far? Uh, to be fair, uh, it's really difficult decision for me to make. Oh, man, because Civil War is so different from Black Panther. But overall, I think as far as a crowd pleaser, it's got to be Civil War first, then Black Panther, then Homecoming for me. Um, Black Panther just did so many things different than the rest of the Marvel films for me. And then after that, it would probably be Ragnarok and then Doctor Strange, then Guardians. Wow. Loy sauce. Uh, my favorite of phase three is Black Panther. Uh Again, it, it t- to me, it just felt like the first Marvel movie that was like actually about something uh, deeper and more meaningful than just uh, superheroes hitting each other. Um, and uh, I-, I just feel like Ryan Coogler had such a great sense of uh, just creating a whole world that we hadn't seen before. Um, and I loved all the characters, and I loved – it was just so exciting to see. I mean, we saw Black Panther in Civil War. He actually might have been a little bit more badass in Civil War than he was in uh, the the film itself. But, I would agree. Um, just, just all of the other characters, all of the female characters in the film especially were so unbelievably badass. And um, I don't know. It's just – it feels like a special film. It, it, that was a film that everyone saw. You know, everyone <laughs> – Literally. Like, Grandmas saw Black Panther, babies saw Black Panther, people brought their dogs to see Black Panther, like everyone saw Black Panther. So I just feel like it's a very, it represents a very important cultural touchstone um, in in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is a cultural touchstone in and of itself. Um, my least favorite film will, would probably be, um, would probably be Doctor Strange. Um, I, there are so many elements to, to Doctor Strange that I love. Uh, but I just feel that the the story it's trying to tell is so stale. The origin story it feels like aren't we past origin stories at this point? I guess not. But to me, it felt very by the numbers, um, and uh, it's still a great film. So I can't even really I can't even really get be too down on it. But great visuals. Uh, I love Cumberbatch as as the character. He does he plays it to the nines. I know why. I'll give you a reason why, because you cast Mods Mickelson in a role as a villain and you Seriously. fucking completely waste him. So there you go. Wasted. There's your excuse. There's your excuse. I still remember his name, though. Caecilius. It's a cool name. He looked cool, but he didn't do much of anything. It's it was... like he didn't do much of anything in Rogue One either, because they cast a great actor to do uh, yeah, not much. but <laughs> It's unfortunate because he's so great. You've seen him do great work in Hannibal. There's a great movie called The Hunt where he is the main character and he does a tremendous job in that film. Um, so I don't know, like I, just give him some, give him some depth, give him some, you know, that could have been a really cool villain, but he was very much wasted. Dormammu is a, is a much better villain. And I love how uh, Dr. Strange bests him in the end, but um, that's very clever, but yeah, I just I just find the story itself to be very stale, and I think you just again you cast Mickelson, waste him. It's unforgivable in my book. I mean, it, do we really have to ask what Phase Three film was my least favorite? Because there's only one no. of these films that was a fucking no. gigantic flaming fucking dumpster fire piece of shit, and that was Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. Guardians oh. One I didn't like, oh. but I at least could respect like why people liked it, and I could respect like that I just wasn't part of it, but I I got kind of what everybody else liked about that film. But 
I do not understand why anyone likes Guardians Volume 2. I think it's an <laughs> utterly atrocious piece oh, of it's... fucking shit. It's garbage. They do the one thing, the, the one thing that really, really worked about the first Guardians movie was those five characters together and they separate them and shoot them off in all their own little directions and let them do their own fucking things. The fucking final battle ends with fucking Chris Pratt turning into fucking Pac-Man. Like, fuck Wait. you. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck, 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 fuck you. Fuck you. God damn it, I fucking hate that fucking movie. I just think the film had heart, and I think a lot of the other comic book movies that we see uh, every few months, they don't have that amount of heart to them. Um, But I get it. I get what you're saying. A A lot of the shit in that movie is recycled from the first film, and it plays off your nostalgia from the movie you just saw a few years earlier. But regardless of that, ladies and gentlemen... We are all officially excited for Infinity War, which lands today, the day that you're listening to this. We thank you for listening to this episode, and we're so appreciative of Podbean once again for sponsoring us on the app. To give a lot of exposure to the live stream for The Cure 2.0, and on a special day, it's Marvel Day. Happy Marvel Day. <laughs> Mm. Hey, try not Maybe to suck any dick take on the way to the parking and lot. And put into my ass day. Hmm. You know, I need a button. I can just, I just need an Epic Film Frog button. Just click it once and bam, there he is. He said when he dismembered the boy, he sucked the blood out of the penis and the scrotum and put the balls in his mouth. Speaking of, sp- speaking of balls in your mouth, the new Venom trailer just dropped as we are speaking right now. Oh my what? god, I hope you posted it to the page. I hope you posted it to the page. I did not. Get to I, it. I, I, now. I, yes, yes, daddy. Now. Oh, yes, daddy. Hi. Do you listen to stuff with your ears? Do you laugh at things with your mouth? Do you use podcasts as a proxy for friends? Maybe you should check us out, because we got you covered. I'm Leany. And I'm Bunny. And we host a fortnightly podcast called Talk Spooky to Me, covering all things a little bit spooky. You can find us on SoundCloud, iTunes, and all the other podcasting apps. Unless they're shit. <laughs> you can follow us on at Talk Spooky if you want to be friends on Twitter. And by the way, we're British. Yep. (laughs) Okay, love ya. And I love spending time with you. Welcome back. Thanks for hanging out with us here on the Epic Film Guys podcast. Real quick here, just landing here as we're recording the show. Brand new poster and trailer for Venom. That means we're going to kick it off into a little segment we like to call... Epic preview. In the world of Endicott, New York, and Herndon, Virginia, two epic film guys dissect the latest movie trailers in a segment we like to call Epic Previews. jumping right in here as we were recording the show the brand new trailer for venom just landed right out of nowhere magically for us to discuss earlier in the evening a leaked photograph of footage that was shown at CinemaCon today of tom hardy as venom leaked we posted it to the facebook page i knew it was inevitable that sony would release the actual trailer because hey it's pr man they want to release that trailer before that leaked footage gets out there and spreads like wildfire so we have a brand new poster and trailer we just aired it live on the live stream on the epic film guys podcast and we're going to jump right in with our first thoughts so i'm going to throw it over to the god of podcasting himself loy sauce what are your initial thoughts on the brand new trailer for venom this looks this doesn't look like the dark horror thriller that Sony promised uh, promised us, necessarily. It still looks like a lot of fun. I think Venom himself is extraordinarily impressive and looks awesome. And I love the, the, the Venom voice that Tom Hardy is giving. Uh, it sounds very... Uh, uh, very powerful spooky. and spooky. Exactly. <laughs> um, it makes me even angrier that life 
the movie Life with Jake Gyllenhaal uh, wasn't wasn't a, a stealth Venom prequel, right? Right. Because they even call it like what was it in the trailer, the Life Corporation or whatever. They even mention <laughs> like I'm like that would have been that would have been such a it's a missed opportunity uh, because then you could see how the alien uh, symbiote, not symbiote, as they say you know, in the trailer, the which fuck? was was very awkward pronunciation. It's not symbiote, it's symbiote. It's an actual word in the English language. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, you could see how the alien symbiote uh, got to Earth. And just watch life and just pretend that it's a Venom prequel. Total missed opportunity there. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I like what I see so far. Uh, I just wish it were, you know, I'd, I'd like to get a red band trailer, get some nasty, you know, violence and gore, hopefully. I mean, if that's the kind of movie that they were promising to begin with, I, I don't see why they couldn't give us that in the first trailer. Well, actually, this is the second trailer because they released that god-awful teaser It was a to teaser. With. It was a teaser, to be god, fair. God, that was a bad, bad trailer. But let's, uh, let's throw it on over to Nicholas here. Nick. I don't know. Would we do that? If you're gonna stay, you will only hurt bad people. The way I see it, we can do whatever we want. Do we have a deal? Are you willing to sacrifice the one thing you hold most dear? You should be extremely afraid. What the hell are you? We are Venom. (laughs) (laughs) Movie looks fucking stupid. Looks just straight up fucking stupid. I agree with Loisos. Stupid or boring? Both. I agree with Loisos. I think Venom himself looks baller as fuck. But duh, fuck you. Yeah, this is supposed to be like a a dark R-rated horror movie type whatever. And they fucking throwing a trailer at us to make it look like a PG-13 superhero movie. Fuck you. It's boring. It just doesn't look good. It it does not, like, I am completely not sold on this movie whatsoever. And the more material they release about it, the less sold I am. Because, I mean, literally, okay, fine, maybe they're just trying to really hold back on showing us as much Venom as possible so we'll get to see all of it in the movie. Or is it really true that we're going to get, like, a lot of this hybrid stuff is this going to be like the the typical kind of superhero fair where the hero always has their mask off or it's always hardy with a symbiote extension arm or whatever else like is that the kind of shit we're going to fucking get because that's fucking stupid that's dumb nick don't you mean a symbiote extension sorry, sorry. arm symbiote symbiote sorry <laughs> sorry apologies sir i mean for me coming off fucking of this Christ. trailer I'm just appreciative of the fact that we have someone like Tom Hardy in the role of Venom, number one, because he looks pretty good in this. Agreed. Um, but I, but, but I, I get what you guys are saying. Uh, the story does not look compelling at all. It doesn't feel like a Venom movie to me. But well, the, you know, you know the, the scene thing he, is, they, is what this trailer feels like is a gigantic workaround to the fact that they, they can't tie the character's origin to Spider-Man. So they're convoluting and just concocting this whole bunch of cockamamie bullshit well it's based on it's based on a story biote it's ba- it's based on a venom story that has nothing to do with spider-man so i don't care um, what the their, fuck it's based on <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you so if, if you don't i'm just explaining to you that, that it has nothing to do with spider-man i think the character can do fine without spider-man though i, I get that the reason why the character is so strong in his essence is because of his rivalry with Spider-Man. Um, that's why we all love him. That's what makes him so evil. That's why he was so dark because he is the dark side of Spider-Man. But 
I'm still going to give this a shot. And I totally get what you guys are saying. It does not look like, as far as the story is concerned, anything all that interesting. It looks like, you know, the little bits of him testing out his powers when he first gets them will be typical comic book fare. Um, but I love what they've done with what Hardy looks like as Venom. And I love the voice and all that stuff. That stuff we've been waiting for for a long time. The voice is Spider Man 3. But is it a little bit too little, too late? is the question. Um, I love Venom. I love the character of Venom. I know director Brennick does not. I don't care. Um, it's a, it's a character that I've always loved since I was Dan younger. Doesn't I love like the visual aesthetic of the character. Dan, Dan's fine with Venom. Oh, well, whatever. Whatever. I still wonder if that's like, is that also what they're going to do with Carnage? Is Carnage just going to be another but one that, of those that, people? That's, that's the other question I was about to get to, though, is because biote. it's been rumored that Woody Harrelson is rumored to be Carnage in this or something. Is Carnage going to be in this? Because if he is, there's not going to be much room for that character either. And that'd be just a complete waste if you're going to give us Carnage and Venom in one movie. Well, and Carnage not, is supposed to be enough the villain, time to though, develop isn't he? Yeah, but dude, dude, Cletus Cassidy is like one of the best... He is, in my opinion, one of the best villains because he's a serial killer. Uh, dude's outright pure evil. Like, he kills people. And then that's why when the symbiote, 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 symbiote gets a hold of him, it's why he's so powerful because the evil inside of him, and it latches on him and he becomes so much. That's why he can make, like, sh- stabbing weapons and axes out of the symbiote in his arms and stuff. Um, I don't symbiote. see it. Symbiote. You know what I worry? You know what I worry about? I have a feeling that this film will follow the ex- will, will follow the exact conventions of every other superhero origin story we've ever seen. Uh Woody Harrelson is going to be Carnage, but he's just going to he's not going to be a serial killer. He's just going to be a guy who works at Evil Corporation and um we see uh Hardy transform into Venom like once early on and then once again later in the last 20 minutes of the film when Woody Harrelson becomes Carnage and then they fight and then the movie's over. Like, I guarantee you that's how it's going to like. Well, because it looks like they're putting in this shoehorned in love story with him and Michelle Williams. And thank God we're getting someone that good in the movie. But at the same time, it's like she'll definitely be wasted in this. Generic oh, love story, generic, generic throwing in a female lead for the sake of it. I mean, I feel bad for her because she's so much, she's worth so much more than that. Um, but we'll see. Um, I, I, I get what you guys are saying. I'm, I'm more on your side than not. I think that I just want to like it more. I don't think it looks stupid, Nick, but I, oh, I, I, I get like what you're it. saying, though. I want to love it. I, I really, really do. I, I really, really love this character. And it's. No, this this has has basically told me that the rumors of Hardy always being out of like not in the full Venom costume are true. And this trailer, like, really, I mean, it's shot after shot after shot after shot of him. All of a sudden, his arm turns into the symbiote tentacle or whatever. Like, I feel Symbiote. like that's a lot of what we're gonna get. <laughs> It's entirely possible. I mean, for me, though, again, let's hope we'll see what happens. I mean, at this point, literally, like I, it, the hype level is so low because we know we just keep getting these things churned out every couple of months. So the fact that they're making a solo Venom movie is really cool. It is Sony, and I'm not one to shit on Sony for the sake of it because, hey, you just mentioned it earlier, Lois. Us. Life was really, really fun and pretty entertaining. And... um We'll see what happens. But based on this, I can't say that I'm like overly enthralled or over the top excited. I think a lot of fans over, are, in the end are just going to be pumped that Venom's in this and he looks like Venom and it's Tom Hardy playing him. And that's that part of me that's saying that, I guess. I, I, I'm i right there with you. I mean, like I said, I like what I see. I'm just not entirely convinced that this movie won't end up being generic as all get out well, i mean because you know i want i want to see venom brutal this character yeah. it, it, i didn't get that, any indication of that no indication of that from the trailer at all you hear i mean it, it cuts and you hear a guy scream so i mean maybe in the movie he'll just like rip the guy's head right off or i don't know dude we, in the we, comic books in which i don't read comics but i know a lot of the early venom comics which i still do own he eats brains dude like he's yeah, fucking brutal that's what I'm dude that's so what I'm saying. I, I know we probably won't see that in the movie but 
in the end, okay, guys, we've we've said what we have to say about this trailer. We're going to move on to another trailer that landed last week that we all had the opportunity to see. Real quick before we wrap up Epic Previews, that is the third and final trailer for Jurassic World. Final trailer. Final <laughs> Jurassic crickets. World. Final crickets. <laughs> Jurassic World. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be the final Jurassic movie ever, but Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Uh, let's also throw it to you. Your initial thoughts. On that trailer. Um, sign me the F up. I think this movie looks like a lot of fun. Um, it, you noted, Justin, that it looks like The Lost World Jurassic Park 2. It, it, it has it, it has is. it has pretty much the exact same plot. Um, and it doesn't look like it's going to stray far from the from the formula at all. But you have dinosaurs in the trailer. So that means that uh, I don't care. <laughs> like, you, have, you, know? you have you have you have Nick's favorite dinosaur of all time. His favorite dinosaur character, Blue from Jurassic World. Oh yes, yeah. That's they're they're favorite, acting right? as if we should life. know or care about Blue at all. Uh, even though I mean, yeah, she was in the first Jurassic World, but it's like we're the, the way the trailer frames it makes it seem like blue is supposed to be this iconic character that we're supposed to be so upset that she doesn't recognize or chris pratt anymore or whatever i just think that's so uh, so silly it's like we're not really attached to these dinosaurs as characters we're we're invested because they're dinosaurs and they go raw um and they bite things and they yeah, attack things and yeah, they, it's, yeah it's all it's all in good fun so uh, i uh, you know i'm f- 100% looking forward to watching this in a theater with a big ass sound system, shoving popcorn in my face. We're doing this shit at Dolby, man. We're doing this shit yeah, at Dolby. Yeah, and just en- hell yeah, and just enjoying the mayhem. Um, it looks like uh, we're gonna have some really cool. Uh, and there's the thing that impressed me the most, and we've talked about this. There are a couple shots of practical, real life. Well, not real life, but. Animatronic, animatronic dinosaurs in this in this thing. So that makes me more excited um, than anything because Jurassic World had zero, no, zero. It had, one. it had the one. Okay, it had the one head. animatronic head. <laughs> but uh, but I, I mean, I think J- uh, Juan Antonio uh, Bayona is a very competent filmmaker. I I have really liked a lot of his films. Um, a monster calls especially he has a great sense of scale and um uh and and heart to that film so i i am 100 percent on board for this i think it could be a lot of fun goofy elements for sure there are moments in the trailer that made me like kind of cringe but eh, it'll be fine it'll be fun these creatures were here before us and if we're not careful They're gonna be here after. Welcome to Jurassic World. Let's ask our buddy there, Nicholas Haskins. He was giving us the cricket sound the whole time. Is that all you have to say now? I'm going to give it to you again, too. This movie looks just fucking stupid. Fuck Jurassic World. <laughs> Is Fuck that this all you have franchise. to say? That, you have to be more creative. God than damn it. Come on. It looks. I, you can't I said say it, the same like, thing. Well, during the break, I said it, but it it le- legitimately, all they're doing is they're just aping the plot of The Lost World and they're throwing a dash of, of Ian Malcolm in there just so he can say, life finds a way again. And. They're just they're throwing in the same exact fucking plot element from Jurassic World. That was the whole hook of Jurassic World was we've genetically modified a dinosaur. So instead of the Indominus Rex this time, it's some fucking super raptor. Fuck you. Indoraptor. Yeah. Do something. Just fuck off. Just stop. What making, would you do? It's though? the same fucking I'm, movie I'm, every fucking single time. I'm curious time. what over you would do. Over and over and over and over again. I'd love to hear what you would do with it. That's my, the question in my head, though. And I get where you're coming from. Believe me, I do. Because that was my initial thoughts on the new trailer. I do think it is the best trailer of the three we've gotten for the new film. It got me the most oh, excited the as far as I don't disagree entertainment with that at all. Wise. 
Um, but it, it again, it, immediately the first thing I said on our page was it's the Lost World Part Two. I don't know where to go. If you're gonna make these movies, where would you go story wise? Like in your opinion, what what would you do as a writer with the film? I don't know. If you were gonna make another one, I don't know. That's not my job. Somebody pay me to do that, and I'll do it. <laughs> I'll give you a quarter. Tell me your pitch. I ain't got no quarter. <laughs> I'll give you a whole nickel. No, uh, but for for me, what I, the only thing I would have loved to have seen is more. Um, and I guess this is just a complaint about Jurassic World more than it is about Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. I, I just wanted to see more uh, dinosaurs loose in the in the park itself. We got a couple of glorious scenes of people being chased by dinosaurs in the actual park when it was open. And that, that British bitch getting 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 you know yeah destroyed. getting ripped apart. That was amazing yeah. and dunked under the water and yeah it was great. Yeah, and a lot of people thought it was mean spirited and 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 out of that's why it was great. Roman. That's why I that's liked a, it exactly. <laughs> that's politically. Um, incorrect you don't want to kill her just because she's on her cell phone oh my god that's the whole reason the franchise exists but anyhow um but there are some i mean the fact that they're taking the dinosaurs uh away from the 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 park and putting them in the real world the outside world is very exciting that that shot of the um uh, what what do they call it the mosasaur mosasaurus in, in, oh, in the, uh, the surfers oh yeah yeah, that dude that shot is incredible like there are some amazing and i love uh the and i guess it's the indoraptor right going into the girl's bedroom that and, is the oh, indoraptor man, yes chilling oh my gosh so i i was just on the edge of my seat watching the trailer so i can't even imagine what it's going to be like in the theater um watching dinosaurs wreak mayhem on i'll, I'll give the it this much world. This is my rule for these movies, and we'll leave it at that while we wrap up Epic Previews. For me, visually, it looks great, okay? I know the story looks generic as fuck, because it is, because guess what? This is not a franchise like a Star Wars or like a Batman or like a Marvel or any of the other major franchises where these characters have a lot of room for development or to take them different places. It's a very simple story. It's contained when Michael Crichton made the first Jurassic Park book. He never wrote it to be made into a bunch of sequel books. Um, He only made the Lost World book because Steven Spielberg wanted to make a movie out of a sequel. And he said, well, I'll write a book so you can make a movie out of that. So it was never based on anything that could lead on to be in segments. So it's all stretching it from the get go. So for me, as milking a big it for fan, everything that it's worth. As a big fan, you all can see it in the live stream. Those of you that are the three of you there, I'm a huge Jurassic fan. I'm going to eat this shit up no matter what. Nick will give me shit until the end of time for my nostalgia boner for the first <sighs> Jurassic World, which I love. We'll see if it gets me to the, that level. We know Rexy's in this. We know there's practical effects. Overall, I'm just hoping that I'm entertained and that it's a decent movie. Dinos kill people. That's all I want. Blood guts. Kill them. Kill them. You won't see blood and guts in a Jurassic Park film. There's but. blood. There's blood. There's a blood splatter at the end of Jurassic World. But we're finishing up epic previews. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the show. We want to thank all of those listeners out there, new and old, especially those new listeners, um, for checking us out based on Podbean sponsoring us on the app. And, of course, all of our loyal followers and our sponsors of the show Leading up to the live stream for The Cure 2.0, Nick, we couldn't be more appreciative and thankful for those of them out there that have supported us all this time and all those new people showing up on the show. We hope you will join us for the live stream for The Cure as well. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Again, uh, we, we can't say enough how grateful we are with all the people coming out of the woodwork to help to promote this event. This promo is running on shows I've never even fucking heard of. Never even heard of them. I'm like, what? Like they played like because I just keep getting tagged and stuff on Twitter, and I think that's fantastic, and I really, really, really appreciate that. I don't mean that in some kind of detrimental way or anything. I think that's amazing, and I think that's the power of this event is it's just reaching out there. It's reaching out there probably even further than we ever could just normally, and 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 I love that about it. So thirty hours, we're gonna have an amazing time. We've got a lot of amazing shows that are gonna take part in. We're just going to have a hell of a good time. We're going to raise a lot of good money for a really, really good cause. May 18th to the 20th, starting at 6 p.m. Eastern time, 30 hours. We're going to be live for 30 hours between 6 p.m. Friday and 6 p.m. Sunday. So it's going to be absolutely great. We've got pre-recorded stuff. We've got games. We've got guests. We've got the God of Podcasting. We've got it all, really. We've got it all. 
We've got an epic film frog. We've got a drunken hobo bastard. We've got everything that you could ever want and need out of a podcast. We've got loy sauce. Yeah. <laughs> a little, a little A1 loy white sauce. sauce. The sauce. He stings a little bit, Taylor? but then he goes down smooth. Good night, Jared Taylor. Destruction in human form. Thank you, as always, for watching. And everybody that joined us tonight, either over on the YouTube or over on Twitch, please catch the live stream. The live stream is going to be up every single week, at least through the live stream for the Cure event. Although I really do like doing the live show. I think it's I think it's nice, and it, it's, uh, hey, you know what? Fuck it. It's another avenue for us to try to get. To try to get out there though a little I'll, bit more. Though I'll refuse it after the live stream for the cure. I'll refuse yeah. it. Damn it, Justin. I'll refuse Justin it. will uh, will just uh, put a stuffed frog on camera the whole time. Unless I can be nude. Unless I can be nude. Yeah, well, of course you, you can be the puppet nude. Up there. We're gonna have to I start can hide under here, to, like, and then I'll just have the puppet something. the whole time. <laughs> It'll be fine. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you as always for listening. Next week on the show, it's the big one, baby. It's the big one. Infinity War is finally here. So please, please, please stay tuned for that. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And I, I don't know about you, Justin, but I know you were telling me last week that Loisos actually worked hard to get them on sale, uh, but I already got my ticket for Deadpool. You know, Deadpool comes out the weekend of the live stream for The Cure. So I'm going to see it Sunday night after the live stream for The Cure is over. Uh, right Dude, after you're the gonna event fall asleep, ends, man. I'm headed right I'm for the theater. You. <laughs> you're you're going to be so beat from the live God stream. God bless. I'm going to die. You're going you're to die that weekend. Sit down to relax and you're just going to be you know what i will but. need to unwind and just let loose and just laugh for a couple of hours and i really think that deadpool will provide that so that's going to be really really nice let's but hope yep, so i'm super looking forward to that solo tickets have got to be going on sale pretty much any day now looking forward to that summer movie season is getting ready to ramp up in a very 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 big way starting with this weekend and the release of infinity war so gentlemen that's all thank you gentlemen that's all Thank That's you. All. <laughs> That's all, folks. For myself, and, uh, for myself. And for Justin, for the oh. god of podcasting himself, A1 Loy Chos Steak Sauce, Thoy Thoth, Moy Moth. I don't even <laughs> fucking know. Loy That guy right there. Thank you all very, very much for listening to the show. And as always, Justin, we will see you at the movies. Like it at podfixnetwork.com.